Good morning. Welcome to Gardening on the West Fork. Today we're going to be fertilizing roses and my lilac tree. But before we get started, let's take a look at the new stairs. I'm standing on, as you can see, we've got the new platform, which will take us over and down the stairs down to the water barrel area. Reg is still working on them. When it's all finished, this will all get stained. The steps will be brown. We'll do the, you can see the posts are black, but what a nice platform. It was, as anything, everything has to be fixed. But let's get in the garden. Let's take a peek. It's been a while since we've been through the garden, been a couple weeks. And here in central West Virginia, zone five and six, the temperatures have been pretty good. Um, you know, still cold in the evenings, probably uh, they're staying in the high 20s. The days are 50s and 60s, well, more 50s than 60s, but uh, it's gonna be beautiful the rest of the week with some rain, high 60s, and things are coming up. So let's take a peek and see what's happening. In my island bed, you'll be able to see the tulips are definitely up. The last time they were just pushing their little heads through the ground and now you can see through the trellis here where clematis is supposed to be coming up. It's still too, it's still too cold for clematises and um, uh, they're not showing signs of growth yet. That's why we'll wait till it warms up a bit before we get them all fertilized. But right in here, I'm gonna get you closer. You can see more tulips. This is their second year, which makes me happy because I've sprayed with deer fence. I've added the extra fencing. No deer so far. Over here, we have a little, this is a little Bonica shrub rose that it, it really had to be cut back last year. It's showing some signs of growth. I am going to get it fertilized today. It's not in the demonstration. And I have a rose back here. This is a knockout rose which is really nice. The Bonico is a sweet little pink rose with fragrance. This knockout rose is a gorgeous orangey melony color, blooms all season long. It will get fertilized today, but it's not in the demonstration to keep things short. These are my double white daffodils right here. And you can see, you can see through here, they have doubled from last year, which is wonderful because daffodils, they do really well. I don't have to worry about the deer eating them. We've got tulips again, all back in through this garden across and the primrose. This garden, this part of the garden gets a lot of sun. So here we go. Look at this lovely white and then the yellows. Just lovely. There's, you can see a duck on the west work. And the west work isn't flooding like it was the last time I had you out. Oh, wait, take a peek. Then we'll get to fertilizing. Oh, if this little daffodil comes out today and this one, they're getting cut and being brought into the house in a little vase. Do that. Don't wait to cut your flowers. They only last a short time. Bring them inside. They'll bring you joy. Over here, another stand of the double white daffodils. There you can see, probably by next week, those will all be in bloom. Here is my Zephyrin Druin rose, and she's a climber. Um, I've, I've had this rose for several years. Beautiful pink rose, little bit of fragrance. Um, it's ready to be fertilized this afternoon. She's not the demonstration, but oh, I love a black fence. Everything shows up really pretty against that fence. In here, we have a nice clematis. Uh, no signs yet. It's, uh, I think it's a purple one, Jack Manny, maybe. Um, I don't have this, I've lost the tag. Uh, I can't remember. But look at this little gem here. This right here is my little anemone that I, I asked and they gave me permission to dig a start my girlfriends and I were at Pittsburgh at the Fix Garden and Museum. And we were out looking at their gardens and they had, a, you know, how they spread. And there were all these little babies. And so I asked for us girls, may we have a start? And they said, sure. So they even gave us bags. So we each dug a clump and mine's coming up. Yippee. 
Well, enough about that, let's get started. So today on both the roses and on the lilac tree, which I'm gonna give you a little pan up there. Hopefully you can see, yep, there it is. Um, they all need a compost over top of whatever fertilizer you're using. And so in here is my nice compost bin. And I will have a little video of when I get ready to transfer this compost pile, which is composted, needs to be stirred, to this lovely, this will all be used during the days when I'm going to be fertilizing. In the next few weeks, we'll use this compost like we're using today to put over top of your fertilizers. So right here is the rose that gets to be in the demonstration. This is an iceberg climbing rose. This will be its second season. It gets nice and tall. And I know that I will keep this as manicured as possible. I want it to look a little wild to wrap around, but I don't want it to be too unmanageable. And I think it blooms better when you keep that. So what you do when you get ready to fertilize is, if you can see right here, I've already removed the mulch away from the root, I mean the crown of the, of the plant. And then I've taken my little digger. Oh, there goes Mozart. Move, 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 move. I've already, you want to uh, loosen the soil at least an inch around the plant so that you can get the fertilizer in. And today I'm using, you can use a rose and bloom. A friend of mine gave me this to use, so I'm gonna use this today. But I have in the past used an all-purpose plant um, organic plant food that's good for um, any kind of flowering shrub tree or like your roses but today since my friend gave it to me we're going to be using the uh, Scott's pelleted fertilizer and read the directions for the size plant I'm using four tablespoons I've already put two tablespoons around the back and now I'm just going to sprinkle the rest just like that around the plant and then you're going to just toss that around get it into the soil and we're going to take our compost cover it up about an inch of compost all over now at this point after you've got your compost and fertilizer on you would water it in but this week we're going to get rain probably starting tonight I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let Mother Nature water it. And so I'm going to go ahead at the end of the day after I fertilize the rest of the roses and um, the lilac. And then I will just pull the mulch back over and that's it. Now with a rose, what you'll probably want to do is um, to keep it flowering about every four to six weeks, when you, especially when you notice that it's not blooming like it should you'll come back in, do the same process. Give it a little fertilizer, and that will keep it going uh, for you through the summer months. You can have those nice blooms. You want to stop though. You don't want to fertilize. I don't usually after July. You don't want it going into the fall blooming. So that's how easy it is. Now up here, we have my beautiful, this is a French lilac tree. And I planted this thing here on purpose so that when we're sitting up on the deck, we can have the fragrance of the blooms if we're lucky enough that the frost doesn't get it. But I, I usually try and cover it so that the blooms don't get too frosted when we do have a frost and we do get frost. But anyhow, here we are. And I have limbed up, as you can see, I've taken the limbs up for two reasons. I like the, the, this multi-trunked uh, uh, tree form. Um, I also, in this bed, there are perennials. You have daylilies, echinacea. I'm going to have some of my cutting garden up here if all my seeds develop. So I like to have the canopy lifted up a little bit. But I've already gone ahead and taken my little uh, landscape rake. These things are so handy when you have a garden bed like this where there's plants and flowers and everything mixed together. Move the mulch out. And then you take your little digger thing. <laughs> Here we go. So you take your little digger thing 
loosen the soil, which I've already done the upper part of the bed, just like that. And then you just take for this, I like bone meal. I've always used bone meal for my lilac. I started that years ago. I'm sure I could probably use the plant tone, but because I've always used it, I'm not gonna change. I'm, I'm slow to change. So according to the directions, for every half inch of diameter of the trunk, you use a half a cup of bone meal. Now, I have actually measured the palm of my hand in a measuring cup, and I have a, a half a cup when I do something like that. So with these three trunks, you can do the math, it's probably gonna be three cups of bone meal. So I've done a cup and a half around the back. And again, you don't put this up against the trunk. You pull this out the perimeter. And let me just finish this off, just like that. And we're going to, so that's your bone mill. You're gonna stir it in, just this easy. And compost. The compost really adds a lot. So we're gonna compost all that in. And living in this area, like I said, we get a lot of rains in the spring. So I'm not going to have to worry about watering this tonight. And that's all there is. With this lilac tree too, you don't want to prune this until after it has bloomed. You want, if you prune it too soon, you'll lose these blooms. So leave this alone, let it bloom, let it leaf out, and then take a look at your structure. And if you like it the way it is, you leave it, and if you don't, then you start pruning it away. So that's it today for the lilacs and the roses. I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting the fertilizer around the ones that didn't make the demonstration. And the next time we meet, it'll be fertilizing hopefully the peonies, the clematises, the irises, and anything else that's coming up through the ground. But until then, get out, cut some of your daffodils if you have them, and just enjoy them. Thanks for watching. Gardening on the Westwork. It's a lovely day on the river.